chair just lost the roll. Okay, gotta be a bit careful. Hi guys. Hi everybody. Thank you for joining me. I'll get you down here. Hi everybody. Hi Michelle. Good to see you. Guys, my name is Angela. I'm the owner and creative energy from Elton Helden. I'm a primary re retailer over here in uh, Frankfurt in Germany. Sorry, Instagram. Hi, Nina. You're back. That's good. <laughs> so um, welcome to the Chalk Mineral Paint 101 page and welcome to my page, uh, which is Elton und Helden. Um, guys, if you haven't done it yet, just pop over there and leave me a like there. That's so important for us artists uh, who go live uh, with you. So um, I hope that uh, I can inspire you. And um, tonight uh, the project is like a little coffee table. And this piece uh, has already been prepared by me. Um, you can paint with the uh, chalk mineral paints from Dixiebel straight onto your projects, uh, unless um, you have a very slick surface. Then it is uh, recommended to use um, to use some um, um, a bonding primer like slick stick from uh, Dixiebel. Or if you have a bleeder like this one, uh, you're going to use some boss. Uh, what you have to do with your pieces, uh, always, whatever it is, you have to clean it nicely. So I've cleaned it nicely and uh, during cleaning, I developed that this is like a heavy bleeder. So this has already been bossed. Um, we're going to um, start with the paint uh, tonight. Um, I just want to show you guys when you pop in just let me know where you are watching from and just say hi to me that'll be absolutely fantastic and um yeah if you watch replay later on just uh, put hashtag replay in the comments and uh, so that i know that you've been watching the video so i have to have a zip of coffee sorry it is 10 pm over here in frankfurt in germany so um, i can drink coffee any time of the day That's mine. That just keeps me going. Okay, I shall put that on the floor before I put my brush into it. The colors I've chosen, um, because the thing with boss is, uh, everybody says uh, when you apply boss, um, you can distress, but you're going to do wet distress. But uh, it's a long time I've seen anybody showing you how to wet distress. So this is what we're going to do. Not tonight, because uh, we are uh, going to apply the first coat of paint and I'm going to explain you why I'm doing it this way. Everything I do um, is like loads of ways doing something. Hi, Ashley. Thank you for joining us. Um, there's loads of ways to do something. I show you the way I do it. I'm not saying that this is like the way it has to be done. This is just like a suggestion for you. Um, how you can do it and maybe you like to try it. So I'll be happy if it helps you. So that's the way it is. Okay. And um, the top color is going to be a mixture of colors because you can mix um, you can mix paints and the base color, which I like to, I have to you know, this could be like a nice uh, classy farmhouse style. Not with me. Um, you know, more like the bohemian type modern grunge. So that's that's my style. I always have to have like some sort of color in there. So the base color is going to be plum crazy, which is about to peek through. Maybe I'm going to do some stenciling on top, but uh, this is uh, anyway the color we're going to use as a base. But um, first, when I have a small piece like this and uh, I want to paint it underneath, it's like this... Uh, edge underneath here which I would like to paint and to make it easier also when you paint the legs and stuff like that to make it easier you can flip it over and this is what I'm going to do I've done some minor repairs on top where I used the Dixie mud for there's just like uh, I don't know if you can see it like those those spot oh, I'm gonna bring that up too. hang on I'm gonna bring that up there's like uh, those where my thumb is those tiny spots there but those were pretty um, deep holes I don't know what they've done maybe somebody has bitten into the table I don't know but they were pretty deep um, deep cuts in there so I filled those up with uh, Dixie mud it is a bit uh, worn out and has like uh, ruined edges and stuff I'm not uh, bothered about those because this you know it's going to be a distressed piece anyway 
So I'm going to flip it over, but I'm going to put like a clean, a clean cloth underneath because uh, this is just uh, the bus. I've bossed it this morning. I've bossed it this morning. That sounds good, doesn't it? Hi, my jets. <laughs> so flip it over. I'm going to put that there as the drop cloth underneath is pretty is pretty used and uh, dirty and so I don't want to have anything stick into the um, into my project. So I'm going to get you a little down. That's it. Now I'm going to get Instagram a little over so you can see the project. And I'm going to show you now why I knew this is going to be a bleed out. I'm just going to get like um, like some paper towel. And this is my my Mr. Bottle. I only got water in there. So I'm going to just like dampen this uh, cloth a little bit. And now I'm going to wipe over this thing. This is only a little bit of water. And you can already see it yellowing. It's just like it's just like a little damp, you know, it's not, you know, there's not water coming out. It's just like a little damp. And I've been rubbing on that wood. And um, this is what what came off or is what's coming off. Even this has been like, I washed it. I washed it in the bath, so to say, you know, I've cleaned it with white lightning and I washed it in the bath. So <laughs> this is so clean, but that's where, where it shows that this is a bleeder. So then you know, when you work with dark colors, you don't need to boss it, but um, I'm going to work also with uh, with uh, light colors. So that's the reason I've chosen to boss it, to make sure that uh, the project is not ruined at the end. So Plum Crazy Chalk Mineral Paint by Dixie Bell is like a, like a crazy plum color, as it says. And I'm going to stir it first nicely to make sure that all the ingredients, all the secret ingredients of those chalk mineral paints are mixed nicely. They are highly pigmented, those paints. They are VOC free. They've got no smell to them whatsoever. You can use them indoors. So they're safe to use them. So that's... Uh, and I'm allergic to, I don't know, almost everything. I've got no problem with those paints whatsoever. And people who follow me know that uh, when I paint, I'm covered in paint myself. So, <laughs> okay, that, that off. Okay. That's it. And then we can start painting. I've got my um, Dixie Bell mini brush I've brought with me. Tonight only one because it's the only one I need. <laughs> so let's get going. And this piece got like some cute details. I'm just going to dip. I did damp it because I just washed it out. I was uh, doing another project early on on the, uh, on the German life. So and then I'm just going to apply my base coat. And it is much easier when you have a small project like this, when you turn it over, I'm going to go in a swirly motion because that's like those details I want to have covered. And I'm not putting much paint onto the brush. It's like only a little. Yes, Michelle, well spotted. It is um, an icing spatula to mix my paints because it was driving me crazy. You have like those wooden stir sticks and stuff like that and they are covered in paint and you can't get it off and uh, you're basically wasting them all the time. So I was looking for something to to stir my paint. So, uh, hi Becky, schön, dass du da bist. So, that's why I'm using an, uh, an icing spatula, cake icing spatula. I didn't know what it was called in English, so um, 
I'm not, um, I can cook, but uh, I can't really bake. That's, uh, and they're easy to clean, you know, they're, they're like, um, they're like, uh, um, Becky, this is uh, plum crazy. Um, hang on. Plum crazy by Dixie Bell. So and this is the base color, as I said. And um, I can choose for those spindles. I'm probably going to do that. I'm going to choose the, there's like those swirls in here. I'm going in a swirly motion to get those covered. Let's see if this works with my, when you have like uh, areas like this, you know, spindles, it is easier with a, with a round brush, but it also works with the, the flat one. I'm just going around like this. That's a nice thing, you know, just like small piece like this, this is not that heavy, so it's easy to, easy to turn over. So you can, um, paint it basically. From here, make sure you get all the spots um, underneath and then when you turn it, flip it over, you have you can see all the spots from the surface, you can go from there. And I'm going to apply two coats of this. Even this is only going to be the color which is supposed to peek through at the end, but uh, as uh, I want to distress it, or bet distress it, and I don't want to have the original wood coming through, I am going to put two coats of the Plum Crazy on there to make sure it's covered nicely. Also, on the knees here, this is going to be covered. There's another chipped area, which I'm not worried about. And you just go, when you paint with the chalk mineral paints, you go with the wood grain, which is not obviously shown here, but uh, it is shown, but um, you only have like one way to go basically, to paint it nicely. Which is pretty easy around this frame. But also, paint uh, thin coats. Firstly, you can see the nice coverage of this paint anyway. So, and um, it dries pretty quick. Just gonna go around all those bottom areas. Make sure I have everything covered. Reload my brush. Just gonna go around. I'm going to turn it around in a second to go in the on the back side, and then we can basically flip it over to do the the top. First, I'm going to do two coats at the bottom here. I'm going to use my um, heat gun to dry it off quickly. If I fall over, it is because I lost the wheel on my chair. I don't. I'm not going to repair that now. <laughs> so if, if I disappear from the screen, um, I tipped over. You know, there's no video with me without an accident. So that would, would be boring. That would be so. So turn that, turn that. And as I said, this is going to be a little bit of a bohemian style. Probably a stencil. I haven't decided yet. Maybe a transfer, you know, when I do my projects, I have a rough idea and I sometimes change my mind. So, and I don't want to rush this also because but I'm rushing it because I'm going to use my heat gun to put the second coat on in a in a second. 
but uh, that's the reason I'm not going to do third coat tonight. This is going to cure, and then we're going to come back next week and uh, have a little bit of fun with it. So, and those paints, they dry really quick also. Guys, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments. I will check on them. Danke, Becky. That's correct, Nina. We have uh, we have great, we have absolutely fantastic bakeries. Unfortunately, those things uh, don't go for me. It's like. Um, in my old age, they finally um, discovered that I have um, a gluten, um, how do you say that in English, um, allergy or whatever you want to call it. So I can't eat um, any cakes and uh, bread and stuff like that. Not this from, from um, normal from wheat and things, so that, that doesn't go for me. Also, I can't eat any milk products. So that's that's what you get when you get old. Um, I know basically when you get old, I basically had it all my life. It was um, just discovered pretty, pretty late. So I always had problems and nobody really knew where they came from. and. Uh, now it got like really, really bad. And so uh, that's basically when we found out that this is from food. Which is not a very nice thing, but uh, fortunately nowadays there's uh, loads of uh, substitutes you can, um, you can have. So I'm gonna go all around this piece, make sure I cover all the areas and thin coats that it dries um, quickly. And around the spindles, I'm going um, perpendicular to the to the leg to make sure I'm covering the areas. So covering so it's here. Makes life so much easier because you can see much better when you tip it over. To paint the bottom. Let's see if there's any questions. Oh, <laughs> missing wheel. Okay. Oh, celiac. This is even worse. I mean, um, this is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. If I just yeah, I fell over, that's the thing. I mean, um, yeah, celiac is even worse. Um, luckily, oh, well, they don't think I am. I had um, to have like further uh, tests, but therefore, to make those tests, I would have had to eat um, gluten food again, which uh, I thought I don't do that. I know if I eat it, it doesn't do me any good and uh, I'm just uh, avoiding it and since then I'm fine you know it's like I'm not having any problems anymore and um, so that's the way it went uh, twist it a little more to get the make sure that I have like all the areas covered and there's still this leg missing Such a beautiful color. Like honestly, it's almost a shame that it's only going to peek through, but um, I'm going to use it on different projects anyway. Okay, first coat is on. Let's see if I have everything. Yes. Am I in the way painting? No. I know I'm very good at that, guys. I'm sorry. I'm going to use my right hand. 
go to the side here. Okay, nothing happened. <laughs> That's always me, I'm sorry. Okay, turn a little more. Oh, there are some spots missing. Just do this guy's dead leg. Neck, got it now. So, and as I said, those paints are dry pretty quick. <laughs> so See if this is already dried and I can apply the second coat. Just go all the way around and when we have this, um, oops, I'm going to fall over in, in tonight, I know that. <laughs> Those chipped areas. I'm not going to repair those. I'm not worried about that. This is just going to suit the chipped character. I just filled the holes on top because they were pretty deep and um, I just didn't want those. Um, I'm just going to dry that quickly because this is still too damp. If I would go over it with a second coat here straight away, um, I would um, I would pull the paint off. Thank you, Nina. Let me just grab the heat gun. I'm going to be a little loud. I'm sorry. And guys, when you, when you paint, um, just let, let the paint dry, you know, it dries pretty quick. Uh, I'm just using um, uh, uh, actually you forget about that one. You mean the color? <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean. So. Now you can see how intense that color gets on the second coat. I mean, there's a dark wood underneath. I'm gonna make sure I get into all those crevices because I don't want to have wood peeking through, but not crazy at the end. That's what I want to have. Also going perpendicular to those spindles. Just around. I'm not touching the surface heavy, just like here, very slight. So painting those legs, making sure. Covered. 
As I said, those paints are dry pretty quick. They are cured within 30 days. They don't have to be sealed. You can seal them. They don't have to be sealed. Um, you can use wax. You can use a top coat. You know, depending obviously um, what um, for what it is going to be used. You know, um, if this is going to be heavily used, I would um, put some gator hide on the on the top of the of the table, not under spindles and stuff like that. Um, wax is uh, fine for this, but. Uh, All the areas before I turn it. Go next area. Ah, okay, that's what you mean. Yeah, I mean, you have to be comfortable, you know, and sometimes when you do projects with colors, I mean, they, they have to appeal to you, you know, um, doing something with colors you don't like at all, I don't think it's going to speak to you. That, that's my personal opinion. I mean, sometimes when you do a, a project for a customer, they may ask you for, for some colors uh, you don't like at all. Why I found it when you when you have a certain style, you also attract customers of this particular style or similar. Um, but sure, I mean, painting colorful is uh, not very common in Germany. I have a couple of fellow German um, artists, which I'm very happy about. Um, also customers with me, um, that they paint colorful because I really like that. A lot of people are still very farmhousey um, with the classy colors and whites and grays, which is absolutely gorgeous, you know, don't take me wrong, I like that. Um, it's just, I love using colors. This is, um, even when I try, even when I try to, to stay very basic, there's like sneaking something in there, so. <laughs> but this is why I, why I say, you know, those when I do projects, they basically develop while I'm while I'm painting, because uh, always, as I said, I have a, I have a rough idea, I have a basic idea, and uh, then I start doing it. There's like some, some more is sneaking into my head, you know, what I want to do with it. So. Guys, if you joined later, um, this is the, the, the base coat, basically, we're doing at the moment. And um, next week, it's like two coats, going to be two coats of the base coat, because I want to have a nice coverage, because next week we are going to do some wet distressing. And the reason I choose wet distressing for this piece is because uh, it is a heavy bleeder and I had to use some boss. And um, when I use boss, I'm not um, distressing with uh, sandpaper or anything because I don't um, want to um, ruin or basically damage the, the blocking uh, function of the boss. So almost done at the bottom, then we can turn it over. We can 
Bring it over and go to the top. And color wise, this is going to be for me. <laughs> I mean, there's like plum craziness, so it's a bit of a mad color, but it is at the end going to be two or probably three colors because I think the top color I'm going to mix. I will check that. I'm not quite sure. I'm because I love mint julep. I want to have like um, like sea glass is too is too light for me. Mint julep is too green for me, and uh, Dixieville blue is too blue for me. <laughs> so I will. I use two codes of the bus, uh, Michelle. I use two codes and um, I always use at least two codes. It depends uh, how heavy the bleeding is of the piece. Um, sometimes I use three codes. Very rarely you need four codes, um, but if it's like a real well, well, I mean, some pieces uh, you can't just like stop bleeding. Then you may put a force coat on there also, but uh, two coats at least. Two coats at least. There's some cracks here. I want to fill those up. So almost done. Just twist it a little more. And then it's going to be interesting how I can turn it over without um, touching anything underneath here. You'll see how I do that. Probably will have to touch it, but. So. And if you have a piece, um, you have to paint underneath and it is uh, weight wise, easy to turn. I would always recommend that. It makes life so much easier instead of like laying on the floor and trying to, to bend yourself so that you can reach all the areas. So do I have everything now? I'm just um, checking. I think I do. That looks pretty good to me. Still, I'm going to dry it quickly. Just like a little on those legs. So this is just the top now we're gonna do. I think I'm going to lift you up a little bit so you can see a little more from the top. See if it works. Sorry for flying. Instagram, you're gonna go up as well a little so you can see that better. You see there's like this, um, there's also like an inlay on top here um, I was thinking of uh, revealing it, but I'm not really into those um, wood things. So I decided, yeah, obviously because there's like some chips in this area also, I decided to, to paint over it. Yes, I'm sure there will be one day a nicer piece to, to do that. So now um, I'm going to get you a little closer so you can see a little better. Um, 
to get like a smooth, I mean, this is the nice thing about the Dixie Belt paints anyway, you know, they are self-leveling, so they're very easy to use. Yeah, they are happy colors. That's right. So you can use your Mr. Bottle just to um, get your brush to move a little easier and you brush with the with the wood grain which is difficult to see here anyway um, and then I'm just um, starting I'm not starting on the edge because I don't want to squeeze the paint over the edge I start a little further away from the edge and then I'm just going back and forth and I'm not touching the surface heavily that's how I do it so and usually also, I start painting around the sides first before I do the top. Lay the paint on here because then I can um, even out like the strokes which go on top while I'm painting the top. It's got some nice detailing. You can see there's like those steps in the on the top there also around the trim. So this is um, going to be quite nice at the end. It's like quite some things you can do with like enhancing those areas. So done the surrounding now i'm gonna go start like a little bit further away from the edge and then i'm just going back and forth and lightly touching the surface i'm not like uh, brushing heavily and as i'm doing two coats i'm just spreading the paint out as far as it goes long strokes back and forth you know um, if you want to have brush strokes you do it differently if you want to have like a smooth area even like we're going to do some distressing so long strokes as i said those paints they are self-leveling further from the edge Put it down and then we go back and forth and spread the paint out. Because you're offloading basically like the main blob of paint on your brush in this area and then you can spread it out around um, on the surface. So cured within 20, uh, 30 days they are. You can seal them either with a top coat, with wax if you want to. Um, that works all nicely. So. Okay. Okay. I'm still here. There was just like some paint behind me, which fell. <laughs> Guys. Alrighty, 40 minutes. I'm gonna let that dry. I'm going to do a second coat on top there also. Just get you a little down to me so you can see me. Um, I'm going to let that dry also. And next week uh, we are going to um, put another color on top, which is going to be some sort of greeny light blue um so i haven't chosen that yet i will do some well mixing and see which which what comes out there and we're going to do some wet distressing and wet distressing because this piece has been bossed and uh, if you want to distress i wouldn't use any sandpaper because with sandpaper you can sand down through the boss and then uh, the protection uh, won't be there, you know, and uh, those areas, um, it might then uh, bleed through again, which we want to avoid. 
So um, it's not uh, boss. You don't need boss if you paint it uh, in black or any of those uh, dark colors or coffee bean or aubergine or something like that because they're really dark. But uh, I want to have like the top color is going to be lighter and I, I don't want to have um, take any risks. So that's the reason I've bossed it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, this was like mega exciting this week but maybe there are some people here or joined or watching this video who haven't used the the paints before um so this is giving them basically an idea how they can work with the paints and how easy you can apply it and you can see on top there this is just like one coat and the coverage is just like amazing so this is the great thing about those paints you know i just love it Guys, I thank you so much for being with me tonight and joining me. Um, if you haven't done it yet, please pop over to my page, leave me a like there. I highly appreciate that. That's so important for us artists uh, to who are out here to help you or maybe inspire you. So I hope I could do that. And um, if you have any questions, uh, leave it in the comments. Even if you watch uh, replay, put hashtag replay in the comments and I will check on them later. That's great, Ashley. Thank you for being with me. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, you stay safe too. It's like we are in lockdown, second lockdown in Germany now. So it's like, like not like a major lockdown, but we are in lockdown. There's like loads of facilities closed. All restaurants are closed. And um, the, the area where I have my shop, um, which is like located... Uh, on an area where a golf course is this one is closed so this is uh, strange again so but i'm happy to be with you guys wherever you're watching from it is uh, quarter to 11 uh, pm over here now i'm wishing you a great day afternoon evening and thank you so much for joining me my name is angela i'm the owner and creative energy from elfen und helden premier retailer for dixabel over here in uh, frankfurt in germany and um, I hope to see you uh, on the Chalk Paint uh, 101 um, page uh, next Thursday, same time. And also do lives in German and uh, I'm also on the Dixieville page and the Woody Van page. So just go and follow me so that you don't miss anything. Guys, take care, stay safe and uh, see you next week. Bye.